On page 33 is a, is a description of left bundle branch block. So left bundle branch block is less common than right bundle branch block. Uh, the left bundle is thicker and shorter. And uh, I suppose we could argue about which is better, longer and thinner versus thicker and shorter, but we won't go there. And um, the left bundle branch has a dual blood supply, the LAD and the AV nodal artery. Um, so looks, let's look at the criteria. Now, I have to tell you quite uh, right off the bat, when I see a P wave with a YQRS, so I know it's a sinus rhythm with aberrant conduction. So if I see a P wave with a YQRS and a V1 is negative, uh, I know almost for certain that I'm dealing with a left bundle branch block because you remember with right bundle branch block, the QRS in V1 is uh, positively deflected. So V1 will be negatively deflected and uh, V1 shows this QS wave typically, so we have a little QA followed by an S wave. And in lead V5, V6, and 1 in AVL, we see uh, an R wave. Whoops, let me go back here. Uh, we see an R wave. Now, I should talk a little bit about this because um, you'll often hear the term rabbit ears uh, to describe bundle branch blocks. And um, we can see rabbit ears in premature ventricular complexes as well. There are other causes of rabbit ears other than bundle branch blocks. So rabbit ears are not great criteria. The other thing I should mention is with a left bundle branch block, you can have uh, a, a tall R wave followed by a small R wave as we have here, or you could have just the opposite. You could have a little R wave like that. It doesn't matter really. What matters is we have a P wave, we have a YQRS, and uh, V1 is negatively deflected, and we have some sort of rabbit ears pattern in either V5 or V6. Quite frankly, one in AVL I never look at, but um, that can also be used as criteria as well, sort of supportive evidence. So here's an example. We have, uh, we have a P wave, we have a YQRS, uh, V1 is negatively deflected, so I know it's not right bundle branch block. I look at V5 and V6, and I see rabbit ears, and I see rabbit ears. So that's a left bundle branch block. Now, um, it's not uncommon to see elderly patients with right or left bundle branch blocks, pretty common, so uh, expect it. You'll notice here in lead two that we have a P wave and a YQRS. Again, we have to look at the precordial leads to make the diagnosis of right or left bundle branch block. Uh, I would recommend using the 12 leads to make that diagnosis anyway. There are other ways to do it, but that would be my recommendation. And um, you'll remember from the STEMI presentation that it's very difficult to diagnose infarcts with a left bundle branch block. And the reason for that, quite simply, is that if there's a block in the left bundle, then what you're seeing on the surface ECD is primarily depolarization of the right ventricle because it has the benefit of going down the right bundle branch, uh, so very uh, rapid uh, transport uh, conduction system. And the left ventricle depolarizes uh, afterwards, and it depolarizes from muscle cell to muscle cell, so it's slower. And again, you'll recall that most infarcts occur in the left ventricle, and if we're seeing predominantly depolarization of the right ventricle, very difficult uh, and sometimes impossible to diagnose acute MI with a left bundle branch block. And this is why uh, one of the STEMI criteria is new onset left bundle branch block, or presumably new onset. And uh, if you recall from before, what I was saying was that if if you have a patient whom you suspect has a new onset left bundle branch block, then in order to have uh, an acute left bundle branch block secondary to an acute myocardial infarct, they probably have a proximal occlusion of their LAD and or their left main coronary artery, in which case they're probably going to be quite sick, if not hypotensive and in failure with pulmonary edema. So something to consider when you're suspecting MI or acute MI in the presence of a left bundle branch block.